My dearly beloved in Christ, if you looked at your personal situation today with absolute honesty, how would you answer this question? Are you happy with your circumstances? To answer this question honestly, there are at the least some things in your life that you wish would, were different. A myriad of things might include your job, relationship, physical illness or disability, family problems, dislike of where you live, disappointment with your children, loneliness, etc. The list can perhaps go on indefinitely and leave you with the unspoken words of if only. The trouble with dwelling on and complaining about the things which we do not like or which you cannot understand or control is that it brings on a spirit of sadness, depression, confusion, and a loss of God's purpose in your life. Trying to ignore your problems can only lead to further frustration and disillusionment. In the Bible and the teachings of the church, we read and have heard about the necessity of trust in God, our loving Father, and his providential care over us. My dear the beloved in Christ, we know and believe this in our mind, but seem to forget it too soon when we meet to meet with day-to-day -day frustrations and disappointments. Living according to God's will is absolutely necessary for our salvation, yet making it a reality involves the process of learning to trust Him. When we experience, have experiences that cause pain or don't seem to make sense or have any purpose, we mentally question why God allows these experiences and our trust begins to waver. We can find a model in St. Paul which may help us to take heart. Perhaps such a question enters St. Paul's mind as he sat under house arrest in Rome. At the time, Rome was most, one of the most important cities of the ancient world and had a large population in need of being instructed about the teachings of Jesus. Yet, St. Paul was not allowed even out of his front door. Awaiting his trial, he spent his days and nights chained to a Roman soldier, one of the elite Praetorian guards assigned to protect the emperor. He did not have a moment of privacy or freedom. If we had been an apostle placed in this situation, it's likely that we would have been full of complaints. We would view this situation as unfair, especially since we'd been so faithful to God and willing to continue preaching and establishing even more new churches in spite of all the sufferings and difficulties we had already been through to that point. We would probably give way to bitterness or despair, thinking that God was dealing with us in a most unfair and illogical way. We would assume there was no purpose or reason for our situation. St. Paul, on the contrary, did not respond as we would have. In his letter to the Philippian believers, he wrote, For I know that this shall be to me unto salvation, through your prayers and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my expectation and hope, that in nothing I shall be confounded, but with all confidence, as always, so now also, shall Christ be magnified in my body, whether it is by life or by death. For to me to, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. In effect, he was not bothered by the fact that he could not comprehend what was going on. Regardless of his circumstances, he was full of confidence in God because he knew that every aspect of his life was under the all-wise direction of God. It's one thing for us to say, yes, that is how it should be, but it's another thing to know how we can get to that mindset. To begin with, in order to arrive at trust in God, we must place all our fears and doubts into his care, focusing on Jesus instead of our circumstances. When faced with the panic of a moment of crisis or annoyed by a personal irritation, we tend to want to concentrate on our grievance. We nurture it going over and over the circumstances which have brought us to that point. Instead, we need to train ourselves to resort to prayer. In these situations, short prayers to God our Father and the Blessed Virgin Mary 
are very efficacious. St. Paul also wrote, Be not anxious, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your petitions be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall help you keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We need to tell God how hurt or upset we are and converse with him in a personal, heart-rending manner. And also, we also need to remind ourselves that God is always in charge of all things, regardless of the maliciousness or fickleness of others or of the illogical situations in which we find ourselves. It's no accident or chance luck which has placed each one of us in the particular circumstances of the moment. God's love is ever flowing over every one of us, even though it is at times difficult to see or understand. St. Paul again instructs us with words, and we know that to those who love God, all things work together unto good. For those who, according to his purpose, are called to be saints. We need to remember that. For those who love God, all things work together unto good. This includes any situation you thought would never happen to you. It also implies to any difficulty you thought you can never get through. God is true to his promises and will give us all the graces we need. Thus, in our many crosses, we should turn to God, the source of our strength, and not focus exclusively on ourselves. In some cases, we may be able to understand and see the good resulting from these different crosses, these situations. However, in many situations, we may never be able to understand or see any purpose in them. We must simply rely on the fact that good will come out of them someday and in some way. God will help us through every trial. After we die, all will become crystal clear. And all this prayer and trust in God's loving care for us are essential. No prayer is futile or wasted. Prayer which is faithful, humble, and fervent reaches heaven. God always answers our prayers, although they're not always answered as expected according to our limited conception of things. It's necessary that prayer be trustful and persevering, regardless of how we feel or what appears to our sensible nature. All prayer should end as our Lord's did in the Garden of Olives. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. No prayers offered with fitting resignation of will are vain. Absolutely none. For either that which is sought will be obtained or something better. Therein lies our confidence in God. It's a fact that no one has ever learned what he was capable of doing unless they were tried. On a natural level, a pilot in a storm, a soldier on a field of battle, an athlete in competition, cannot tell what they're capable of until put to the test. Through trials, we become acquainted with their current state and their potential. So too is it on the spiritual level. It's easy to trust God when everything is going according to our will and expectations. It's only through adversity and trial that we can prove what we are really made of and how much virtue we really have. The old adage, adversity builds character, holds true. How can we tell how much courage and virtue we have if, for example, we're very wealthy and we've never had to bear poverty? If we have the approbation of all and never had to endure persecution or hatred, if life is smooth for us, we've never had to endure misery and calamity. Christ himself said, In the world you shall have distress, but have confidence. I have overcome the world. During this life, we cannot escape crosses, contradictions, and adversity. Whether we allow ourselves to be overwhelmed and crushed by them, or whether we find that we have the strength to 
carry our crosses bravely and meritoriously all depends on our attitude and acceptance or non-acceptance of them. There's no getting out of it. Life is a test, a spiritual battleground. As mentioned so many times before, prayer is essential to retain our peace of soul amid suffering. Perhaps the prayer written by Thomas a. Kempis in The Imitation of Christ captures best the essence of trust and hope in God. It reads, Lord, if this be pleasing unto thee, let it be so. Lord, if it be to thy honor in thy name, let this be done. Lord, if thou seest it to be good and allowest it to be profitable to me, then grant that I may use this to thy honor and glory. With that in mind, I'll end with the following words which were written by an anonymous soldier of the American Civil War. I asked God for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn humbly to obey. I asked for health that I might do great things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I asked for riches that I might be happy. I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have the praise of men. I was given weakness that I may see the need for God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I got nothing I asked for, but everything I had hoped for. Almost despite myself, my unspoken prayers were answered. I am, I am among all men most richly blessed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.